She's going to get rid of what? Hi folks, it's Darcy from ThePurposefulPantry.com and welcome to part of my dehydrating pantry. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of what's here. I've had lots of people request it uh, to find out what I store on my shelves, what I dehydrate, but this is only a portion of what we store. We have two other locations in our home that we keep some of our food in. Uh, we have some in our regular pantry and some in another location uh, that I just have to keep some overstock in because we just don't have enough space in our little house uh, or poorly designed house, I should say. We don't have a ton of storage space. So I'm gonna walk you through this portion of my pantry, but I'm also gonna be doing some clean out and I'm gonna show you what I do with the food that I'm not gonna keep dehydrated this way. And then we're just gonna talk about what's here. So let's get started, shall we? All right, so here we go. This is corn, dried corn. It came from the freezer. Uh, what I do every winter when, when freezer foods go on sale, I start dehydrating like crazy. One, because they're already prepped. They're ready to go. I have to do nothing to them other than open them and pour them on trays and dry them. I can't grow my own corn. Uh, we only get a good variety of corn to eat in the summer for a portion of time. And I would rather spend that time on other foods that are worth it. I find that frozen corn tastes better anyway, so I do corn. But we're gonna keep this right here is, um, okay, let's start here. This is dried cabbage that I'm gonna go ahead and this is going to go away. Uh, what I'm doing with this is it will be uh, powdered into a generic vegetable powder or my green powder. I don't know which way I'm gonna use it, but we're gonna powder this because I'm finding we're not using it quickly enough. Uh, I'm the only person who lives in my home anymore, to, who, anymore who likes soup. My oldest son, who is a soup fanatic, has moved out. Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to, I'm just going to go ahead and grind this for our green powder or vegetable powder because we will use that way more than what we'll use this cabbage. I'm going to set it aside because I'm going to show you what I did that later. Then this is zucchini. And I find that this is how I use zucchini most. Shreds that are dry that I can add in soup, stews spaghetti sauce, I can make bread with it, I can do whatever. So I keep shredded zucchini is what I store most often. That is staying, it's not going away. Okay, but I need to make some room right here while I move these and I'll repack in a second. What we have here are dried beans that we can add to some soups and some casseroles. We have uh, dried onions, uh, dried citrus that I use to put in my tea uh, in the winter when I drink a ton of tea, hot tea, I use this. Then we have mushroom bits, which is what we find we use the most. We, um, I can put these in anything. And those texture uh, people who don't like dried mushrooms in our family, like big chunks of them, like me and my youngest son, this works great because it, they, they rehydrate better. They're not large chunks of kind of weird rubbery things that we find. So we use mushroom bits more than anything. And just so you know, I will have links to most things down below, or if you want to learn how to do any of these, you can just go use the magnifying glass on my channel page and it will take you to the videos. We have some dried elderberry that I don't do. I purchase these because we can't find them locally. So I just go ahead and purchase them. And these are some of the heirloom jars that we have from family members. Uh, I had an aunt who passed away who did a lot of canning. Uh, in storage and so we have some of these but honestly I kept them to keep them here safe but they are actually taking up room that I need for dehydrated food so I'm going to find a new place for these to go. Um, don't know where that's going to be yet but we'll find a new home. Our beans will stay here and something else I keep here of uh, apples for baking and then I have a couple of things that I consider props. Okay. So these are meals in a jar that I created in order to have photos for my meals in a jar uh, post on my website. So they don't get eaten, they don't get used. So this is a Southwestern soup mix uh, and this is just a generic soup mix that I usually put together for me. Bow tie pasta, uh, tomatoes, dried tomato chips, uh, lots of dehydrated vegetables, some bouillon, um, and that's basically a quick meal for me, but I use this as a prop to make sure that I have something for the blog. So uh, we're gonna put those on a new shelf. Beans and mushrooms, corn and zucchini. This is what I didn't show you earlier. Uh, it is large mushrooms that are just all the big chunks. We are gonna make this into powder. All right, so I'm trying to find my other big half gallon jars I'll use. Uh, mushrooms, I meant mushrooms. <laughs> Marshmallows, we use these in hot chocolates all winter long. We love these. Uh, they are great for gifting for Christmas. 
They are great to roll in some chocolate and some crushed graham crackers and let them dry. And there are little s'more pops that are wonderful. Uh, you can use these for a ton of things, but I keep these on hand all the time. Uh, and I also have a strawberry, I mean, this is not strawberry, it's peppermint version. My youngest son loves these in his, mar in his uh, hot chocolate, so I keep these as well. I just don't need to keep them up on the top shelf. They're kind of tucked away down here, more accessible. So I know now I have some room for at least a few other jars here that I can put in large quantities. So as I start drying things from the winter, I've got more space to put large jars in. Okay, next shelf, and I'm gonna kind of just rearrange things as I go. Uh, the dried apples, we'll just stick right here for now. I have mint, which I put in my tea so it stays. Carrot bits. Now, what you can see here are these are carrots that have been not blanched. They've just been dried from shreds that I got from the grocery store. And then some bits down here as well. They lose their color over time when they're not blanched. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just uh, powder all of this to put in vegetable powder. They haven't lost all of their vitamins and minerals. They just lost some of the beta carotene that stays here. Uh, when you blanch, it preserves that. When they're not blanched, this is what happens, which is why many foods are recommended to blanch before you dry them. Although it doesn't, it doesn't affect the taste, it doesn't affect the texture, uh, it doesn't affect all the vitamins, but you see how it's kind of turning white. It's just losing some of that color. So we're gonna go ahead and powder this because I do have other carrots that we can use. All right, so I have a couple. Did I move this one already? I think I may have. All right, this is, usually I keep this in a big half gallon jar, but I didn't have enough. So I, when, I, when I can't fill a whole jar, I will put it in a smaller jar because you don't want all that dead space. This is just generic vegetable mix that you can get frozen. This is the easiest thing to start with dehydrating. This is all I have left. I'm gonna go ahead and powder this because I'm almost out of vegetable powder. So this will be the start of the bulk of the new batch of vegetable powder. And then I will buy more frozen vegetables and dry them and have them in storage. So green onions, I've just finished up another batch of this so I can put it in a large, uh, a large half gallon when I'm done. So that's what's gonna happen here. Uh, tomato powder, I'm almost out. Um, I'm desperately needing more because we go through all this and I didn't do my typical fall tomato paste dry. And you can use this in so many ways by putting I don't know, tomato sauce in meatloaf, in your spaghetti to kind of bulk up the flavor of it. You can put it in any kind of stew to give just more depth of flavor. You can make tomato paste with this. You can make spaghetti sauce from this. So this is really versatile and I need to make more. Okay, zucchini chips. Now I will eat these when they're seasoned like potato chips. They taste like Lay's potato chips to me. I mean, they have that that thin texture that just crunches and when you put flavor on, they're great. But I don't use slices in anything anymore. So we're gonna powder this for vegetable powder. Then we have a taco soup mix, which we'll probably have for meal one day this winter. But I can make a huge batch like this and give leftovers to my oldest son. Uh, when he comes to visit, I send home leftovers. Uh, we have two kinds of cranberries. We have whole cranberries that I dried. They're like craisins. Uh, they're just like eating raisins basically. And then I have cranberry bits, which are not treated that I run through a food processor and this is what I use for baking because this is a smaller piece to go in so that people like the texture better. So I have these. We're just gonna keep these right here for now. We have the last of my dried rice. I need to make a ton more um, because I will use this all the time. But this is really great for if you're a hiker, backpacker. Um, it's one-to-one -one with water so you don't have to try to source as much water or carry in as much water. Um, and it's perfect for doing things uh, like that. But it's also great for these kind of meals in a jar when you don't have to have really long cooking times. You just put everything in together and you let it simmer and it comes a meal pretty quickly without that added starch from trying to cook raw rice in with things that are already dried and cooked. So there's that. Then we have lots and lots of uh, little pe chili peppers that I do for my son. Uh, my oldest son loves this, so I keep extra here. Uh, and then here is my are my carrots that I use for doing meals. This is blanched and it's ready to go so it doesn't lose the color the same way the other ones did. So we will keep those. Cranberries, taco soup. Usually I have a section of just soup mixes but because my son moved out, it's just me. Uh, we've eaten through most of them and I'm not making a ton more but they're great for Christmas gifts. And again, I will have links to everything down below. Okay, these are probably gonna go away. We don't need them. Uh, nobody really likes them. Uh, they're big and hard, but this is what Lucky Charms marshmallows, this is what they look like when they're dried. 
Oh. Or I'm gonna just add them to my marshmallow powder, which my son likes to use for his hot chocolate sometimes. Um, this is green onion uh, powder that we use in place of onion powder sometimes. Uh, then, is this the same? Oh, these are sweet peppers. So this is those little bags of sweet peppers that you can get, the orange, red, and the yellow, but they're the small peppers. That's what these are. They're perfect to just toss in any kind of stew, soup, casserole, anything like that. They, you can just toss them on top of pizza to make pizzas. So that's what those are for. Then I have some other things like this were a maraschino cherries that I dried so I could show how to do it. Uh, we don't really eat these, but they're kind of fun for a snack, but we found that we just don't eat them much. Uh, and I don't know what I'm going to do with these yet. I'm not going to powder them. There's too much sugar. They won't really powder well, uh, but they're, you know, a great little prop. It looks cute. So that will go elsewhere. Then this is, uh, okay, the dangers of not labeling your jars. I have no idea what this is. Um, even if I open it, I don't know what that is. Um, it's hard to say what the smell is. <coughs> and I just got some up my nose. Hold on. But every once in a while I do this too, they'll think, I don't remember what that is. And I don't, and I didn't label it. So I'm going to figure out what this is and then I'll put it back. Okay. So that's that. And then these are, uh, celery and celery leaves. So when I dehydrate celery, I do it in bulk. Uh, but then I found we don't use it much. So this gets powdered more often than I ever use celery like this. But that's just me. You might find that you like it. So um, this will get powdered for vegetable powder. And then this will also get powdered for greens. Okay, then I'm going to go down here to our lower shelf, which you can't see on camera. I have a whole bo a bottle of uh, dry and dry moisture absorbers that I use. If if I'm going to use a moisture absorber, I usually use it in fruits or powders. I don't generally use it for anything else because it's just not necessary. If your jars are airtight, nothing's getting in them. So you don't really need to do anything to them, but I keep it here for things that either I'm in and out of all the time or for fruits and uh, powders that are typically more susceptible to moisture. Then I have a little cute jar that I need to transfer into a regular jar. These jars are wonderful. I love them, but they're not really great for the kind of storage I have to do and packing things in. These are dried shallots. This is dried tomato fruit leather. So I still have some of this left that I need to go ahead and it's been here for a little while. Uh, I had extra room and I had meant to do something else with it and didn't. So these are gonna have a little moisture added to them. So when I put something else in the dehydrator, I'll just add this to a shelf, get them dried out and powder it for more tomato powder. Then I have uh, more, this was, this is celery. This was strawberry tops that we use for our rabbit. So, uh, or I can make this for, I can put this in with a tea bag or I can just blend it for uh, green powder, which is what's gonna happen to this. They've been around long enough. We'll give about half of it to the rabbit and the rest will get powdered. This is a cauliflower, a carrot and broccoli mix that I had gotten from the store. It's gonna get powdered. Uh, green onion powder. This was the bottom of the, like when you have a green onion or a scallion that some of you might call it, you have the white bit and then you have the green bit. This is the white bit powdered. Uh, this, I have no idea what it is. And this is uh, zucchini powder so that you can use this to make uh, breads and doughs and things like that. That, um, again, that's picante powder, okay. So I dehydrated a picante sauce and uh, made a little leather out of it. And then we powdered it down to have some kind of hot sauce powder. So that's what that is. I need to mark that. So I'll put it aside to remind myself to mark it. Because sometimes I will do things and I'm in such a rush, but I get stuff stored away. I keep thinking I'm gonna do it and forget that I ever needed to do it. But this is one of the things that for, for any kind of food storage, label your jars and your packages and everything. You won't always remember what you have. All right, this is more dried zucchini. These are old dried strawberries, so these are going to go. An empty jar that I use for photos, photo props. Then these are more whole peppers. Some of those sweet peppers that I did, I did them whole so that you could see how you do them both ways. And that is the end of that shelf. Then we have a shelf full of mostly, this is like small bits of things or fruit powders or small bits of fruit that I've dried. What I do for my husband is that I will dry uh, and make capsules for him to take as supplements. So I fill it with green powder, I'll fill it with vegetable powder, I will fill it with a blend of anything. It's just whatever we happen to have a lot of at the moment, we'll make capsules and he can take them to feel like he's getting more nutrients because he likes to do that. Then we have 
dried cherries, which we can use in any baking. We have dried pickles, which are going to go because we don't eat them. We don't, uh, the son who likes them has moved on and he didn't want to take them with him. And I haven't cleaned that out yet. Uh, usually I do this for pickle powder that is used as a seasoning. Then we have beet powder. We have strawberry powder, blueberry powder. I need a little extra room here. I'm just going to store them down here. This is apple powder that we uh, like will grind apple skins or you can actually do whole apples after you've dried them and maybe you found you didn't like them. You can do this and you use this to uh, add sweetness to things or add a little apple to it, a little apple flavor. Like maybe um, you'd want to add it to some bread to, to just give a new flavor to it. Then we have small jar of strawberries. The, these are, um, oh, dried ginger, what, what I have left. Carrot powder, which you can see was made from those carrots that um, I did that were not blanched. So even the powder has turned white over time. That will go. More ginger bits. So the first ginger that I showed you were when I peeled ginger into slices. And then this is just ground up ginger that are ginger bits that I just put through the food, food processor. All the same stuff. We just can combine it. More tomato slices that are seasoned, that are wonderful. I put these on pizza and they're, they're awesome. Then um, citrus powder, which is when I blended up. Uh, lemon lime and oranges. I find that I don't really use this much. Then this was the leftover celery that's old, so we're gonna get rid of that because of the date. And we have picante sauce bits. We have uh, more blackberry powder. This is empty. That's usually what red pepper powder is in here, and I don't have any left. Then this is apple bits. So this is what I prefer because I put this in oatmeal and baking. Um, we have pomegranates from when I did pom pomegranates a while back to show you how to do it. Uh, raspberry powder. We have more blackberry powder. I should combine those. Uh, leftover bits of citrus that didn't fit in the jar that I need to use those first when I do tea now. Um, blackberries that I dried two years ago um, that are still here uh, that I use for a prop. And raspberries the same way, but I'm out, so I need to make more of those. Um, why do I have two red peppers? This is red pepper powder. It's paprika. It's a paprika mock, um, but that's what I do with this. We don't need two of those jars. And then, let's see, what else do we have left here? We have, um, oh, strawberry leather. So I keep some there for that. And then uh, this is leftover strawberries. So we have quite a few of these that, you know, moving through, if somebody has moved it and I don't know where it is and I see that I've got to do more, I might not have refilled the jar. So I need to make better use of inventory to make sure that I'm going through things so I don't have so many leftovers. So that's my storage here. So let me show you what I'm gonna do with this next. All right, so here we are. We have zucchini, um, some old zucchini shreds that we're gonna do, lots of um, dried vegetables. We're gonna do the carrots and broccoli, the carrots by themselves. This is celery, more celery. Um, not that. We're going to do the mushrooms separately, the cabbage. We've got the zucchini powder that we're going to blend in, whatever that was. Uh, everything here that was either a small powder that I'm no longer using or stuff that's green powder, we'll do that separately. Um, this is more celery, more powder, more powder, carrot powder, and other celery. Okay, so basically we're going to take all of these and we're going to blend them in to a powder. And then I'm going to add them all to a bowl so I can mix it up really well so it doesn't go in layers. And then that will be added to our regular vegetable powder at the end. So I'm just going to walk through it. I'm just going to start all this. You can just watch me do it. And we'll be back to talk about it. All right.
All right, now that you've seen, I've made a huge mess of my kitchen. Um, what's next? This mushroom powder, I'm going to just store the way it is. I could make a, mo a mommy seasoning with it, which is a seasoning I made like this. It has some salt, some other uh, spices in it that gives a really great meat flavor to things that don't really contain meat. It's just this depth of flavor that you can add to vegetarian dishes, to rice, to meat, to anything that you're making. Uh, it can make a great rub for things. I'll leave the link to the description. Try that again. I'll leave the link in the description box below with a recipe for this. Uh, but I love making this stuff. Then for the vegetable powder, I always tell you don't powder more than you can use at for a couple of months at a time, maybe three. Okay because powders tend to degrade faster than whole foods. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna split part of it to go off to my son tonight. When that uh, pantry so that I could get more things in there that we'll be doing and so to help it stop degrading the freezer is a good spot if you have more than you can use so let's get to the next part which is conditioning which we put this out on a sheet pan put it in the oven at a when you warm your oven then turn it off and then just let it sit there for about 15 minutes this has gotten hot from the motor in the the blender and so it heats everything up and what you want to do is kind of take out that issue so while you're putting it into a slightly warm environment, whatever moisture has been attracted, that's what you're trying to get rid of. So we're gonna do that next. All right, here's our first tray of conditioned powders. Now you might find that when you do this step that you might have a cakey film over the top where it's just kind of hardened across the top of it. As long as you can do this and mix it back up, you're okay, it's just perfectly fine. And if you like something that's a little even more powdered than this, I mean, I'm telling you this is relatively fine grain, but you may see some flux of things that didn't get, oops, sorry some flux that didn't get quite done. If you want a finer grain, you can do that. Just do it however you like it. It's not necessary for me to get any smaller than this because once it's had a time to, to cook a little bit in the meal, those tiny little bits of vegetables get soft. You don't notice them anyway. Of course, you can use a smaller bullet blender. You can use your blender. You can use a small coffee grinder, depending on the quantity that you're trying to do. The tool doesn't matter as much as just the process. Um, but just make sure on these smaller ones that you do a lot of pulsing to get the biggest stuff broke down before you do a hard grind because they tend to wear out if you try to do the hard grind up front. All right, now we're going to start putting these in some jars and get ready to store away. Yes, my, my uh, funnel's a little dirty because I just did the um, mushroom powder. I went ahead and got it finished first, and it is fine, 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 fine powder. There you go. So I did that one already. I'm not going to bother washing this a second time because it doesn't need it. So I'm going to be messy. You do you.
Okay, here's my number one tray. That is gonna go in the freezer. It is one quart of vegetable powder. I can't even tell you all the vegetables that are in here anymore, uh, but all these nutrients and vitamins and benefits are gonna be added to our meals all the time. So let's do tray number two. So I'm just reusing our vegetable jar that we keep by the, the uh, oven all the time, by the stove top. And a second one for my son. Gonna date it. Here we have what we did from cleaning out all of those jars, and I wish I could show you the jars, but they're all over my kitchen right now that need to be cleaned. We got a good bunch of mushroom powder and then a ton, two quarts basically, of vegetable powder. So this is what you can do with your with your dehydrated foods if you don't like them, if you made too much and you think that they're gonna go bad before you can use them all. One tablespoon of this powder equals about a cup of fresh. So you can kind of adjust that to how you like it with whatever meal you're making, put it in your eggs, in your, in your casseroles, in your pasta doughs, in your uh, soups, in anything that you make, you can use this in those. So if you wanna see how I make green powder, watch this video right here. And until I see you again next time, happy dehydrating.